Hello everybody, welcome back to Motion RC for another live show. I'm doing this every week for the year now, and today we're going to be doing an unboxing, and then next week be sure to tune in, because next week is our standard live show with Wes, Lori, the graphics, the community uh, stuff, all that jazz. Um, but for today, we're going to be doing another one of these Bancroft boats, which... Um, are just awesome um they're awesome to see every time i pull a new one out of the box uh, i've been doing a lot of them recently um and uh you know they're all fantastic so you know always worthwhile to uh pull these out of the box to show everybody how they look and then eventually obviously i'm gonna get this in the water hopefully monday get this thing balance alex and get it out there before you I, I just have the yamato on the table because we have another japanese battleship in here this is the congo uh that we're gonna do today and the Congo uh, has pretty cool history, um, if, uh, if you followed it. Like, I didn't realize the Congo was built, like, in 1911. It was a battle cruiser. It served, like, World War I, and then got a couple refurbishments all the way through and survived all the way till late 1944, and it was the only Japanese battleship sunk by a submarine. So I think only three ships were actually sunk by a submarine like the submarine got the credit for the kill it was the uss sea lion which sunk uh this and then a couple months later the yamato went down and basically the end of the japanese fleet and world war ii uh after that so we got the congo in here it's a little smaller than yamato so i'll move that out of the way but do want to say what's up to some of the people in the chat we've got uh slot nuts rc is here of course there he is Spencer, uh, what's going on, man? Vic, how you doing? Med Scott, how's everything? And uh, yeah, we're going to spend some time here today to pull one out of the box. Let me move this out of the way, get the Yamato, because then after I could bring it back to air. Um, but again, the Congo would have been smaller. Uh, let me go get need my X-Acto knife. And then here's the box. Only thing I've done so far is I took the top cover off just to not be so uh, you know obnoxious trying to get that removed. And I um, want to show you guys, again, you know, one of, the, one of the best things about getting these warships is how they are uh, packaged up. So you can see in here that there's a lot of foam that covers, uh, you know, all those areas. Yeah, pretty big box. This one's actually a lot smaller than, let's say, the Nimitz was. You know, the Nimitz is about, was about the biggest box. Felt bad for the uh, trash guys who had to get rid of that one for me, but they did. But taking a look inside, everything gets uh, everything fits in there nicely. And then you just have your two covers. Because again, all these warships are ready to run. So there's not much you need to do to get them going out of the box. And usually you get two boxes within the big box. One's going to hold your transmitter. And one's going to have any accessory bits and pieces, the battery, things like that, that you're going to need. So let me, uh, let me carefully remove these two boxes. So they sort of sit, um, the foam in here, each one's a little different, but the foam, they create shelves with the foam that these boxes uh, sort of rest on, and then they tape it down. Here's box one, and then you, one, you know, get the boxes out, and then I can bend it down one more time and show you guys. Hope everybody's having a good uh, weekend. What are you guys plans for Memorial Day? Anyone doing any... Flying in a Wes and Lori right now are in Jacksonville for a Warbird event um, that Wes went to last year. He wanted to get back to it again this year. So that's what they're doing. And I think they're going to be going live from the field like tomorrow or throughout the weekend a couple times. Um, here's the second box. Uh, so they'll be doing some flying there. I got a birthday coming up. I'm a Memorial Day baby. I was born 31st. The year I was born, it was on Memorial Day on that monday and sometimes it falls on the monday but uh i still got a couple days left but now taking another peek inside so we now remove the boxes so you can see there's like a foam shelf that they cover here and then the other box was sitting and like it wouldn't fall down um it really wouldn't be able to they tape it up nicely so it fits perfectly there but that's rc local jet event at your field this weekend that's awesome Victor, nice long weekend. What are you working on? Oh, turbine for your one-fifth scale F-86. You're going to go pick up the turbine for it. Oh, nice. Where do you got to pick that up, Vic? From a store or from a person? You buying it offhand? All right, so that shows that. So now let's, let's pull this out. First piece of foam. I love saving these. I don't know, but I save, like, 
I save foam. Anytime I get good blocks of foam, you never know what you're going to need it for. But uh, I love it for just storage purposes um, when you got to move things around. And a lot of these flat pieces of foam will actually work great uh, for your planes and stuff just to rest the pieces on while you're building them if you don't want, you don't have one of those big stands. All right, just looking down in here, can I pull it out? Out. Am I going to have to do the thing thing? Oh. I think we got this, Alex. I think we got this. Oh, oh, oh. I get nervous. I'm nervous. Can you come over here? I don't want it to fall. Can you come and put your hand under? Do you mind? Like, put your hand under that. There you go. There you go. Looks good, though. All right. Let's pull her out. There it is. I just don't want the, didn't want these to open up. Let me just take a peek in there, make sure there's nothing I'm missing. Might hide something. No, we're good, man. Wow, this is cool. So this is cool. So again, the Congo was like a battle cruiser. And it got retrofitted twice, so I'm, you know, I'm assuming, and you know, someone could be wrong, but this would have been how she looked before she sank. So this would have been the World War II version, because again, the ship was older, retrofitted a couple times, then came in. But looking for some of the, some of the clear differences, it's cool. It's like a tight, more tightly compact, if you will, than the uh, than the Yamato is. A different looking ship altogether. Still got four, still got four motors inside. So this thing's gonna be quick based on the uh, the size of it, because it definitely weighs a lot less than the Yamato would. But uh, it's looking pretty good. Where? Oh, that's what. It is. Oh, there it is. See, you gotta check. They put the uh, they put our stand. They taped it to the bottom of the foam. So you gotta check around because every one of these ships will come with a stand, and these stands are um molded to fit the ship that you have so you know definitely when you even when you take out any ship both sides of the stand are sort of more molded around depending on how the uh the hull is of the ship that you're getting um to determine which side it goes it's well, actually a longer one so let's get this together so then i'll have something and this is just press fit you can glue it but it's usually pretty Pretty tight. Press all like just wood. Okay, this will work for now. So there we go. So we got a pressed fit there. And then now this is where we get. So again, it's always the rigging is always the thing you gotta you gotta pay attention to. So with the rigging, what they usually do like on this side now we're getting closer but like they tape down one side of the rigging here and then i don't see it taped down on this side but i'm sure it is you can see because they, they place it in the foam so we'll get this off first for that pull out of the foam Side is out. Things live are totally fun. That down that way. Put this. Wait a second. Press that way. Now let's figure out how to get, so they have a cut. All right, they have a slice up here for this piece. Taped on, oh, it's taped on this side. Close shot, oh, okay. But it's taped on this side. Wraps up, tape is gone, up, over. Press that down that way, and then you can Neatly take off 
Very careful. Boom. Then they got the ribbon on there, which is holding down the, the superstructure. All right, so we're missing the four big guns. That's going to be in a box for sure. But there you go. So now our rigging is out here, and I'm not going to put that on yet. But yes, check that out. It's going to look cool in the water with. Now I need to. So we had the Nagato. I, gave, I lent it to Wes. Oh, no. Wes has the Nagato. I would have had. I would have had uh I would have had the Nagato, the Congo. We could have had all three of them in the water at the same time. That would have been kind of cool. What are we seeing here? Any uh, local warbird played navy fields with all these warships for over 12 years and it finally died. What is that? What is navy field? Is that a game? I don't know what navy field is. That's cool. What's going on, Refines? How you doing, man? Good to see you here. And uh, all right, let's open up our box and see which is which. I assume this is the transmitter box just based on the shape and size, and I am correct. But we also have, we have our LiPo. So that's the LiPo that every one of these ships have come with so far, 2800-2S. Uh, works great, and it's XC60. Been more than enough uh, juice for these boats. But again, if you wanted to get a 5000 2S, probably one of those 2S batteries you use in your 8S free wing jets, like a 5000 one, just double the length of time to be in there. But here's your transmitter. Um, you know, most of these warships come with transmitters like this. I think only some of the boats don't come with the, uh, I always call these like a plane transmitter, don't come with the RC car type transmitter. Some of them come with that if they need it. I prefer this style um, if you're going to go that route. But again, you could set up any, you could slap any receiver in here and use your regular, you know, transmitter as well, if you wanted to. You don't have to use the ones that uh, come with this. But we have our Admiral Charger as well, which comes with the, uh, with the ship, as we'd expect. And that was everything in that one box. So then that means all our accessories should be yeah, in this lighter. This box is pretty light. So this will be like, if you remember the Nimitz when I pulled it out. All the planes and everything were in were nicely nicely kept uh, in foam and such. So let's see what do we got here. All right, we got our rising sun and Japanese flags, so that we can add to around the ship like the other one. They give you a piece of Velcro, double sided, for your uh, I mean for your battery to mount inside. And then let's see how this looks. Oh, you're on the okay. You got the you got the small cam. I'm live wide, but I'm right here. There we go. That's a cool looking shot. Pull it up, and then it's just our turrets and miscellaneous bits will be in here. Oh, one of them might be a, one of them a crane. Oh no, no. Oh, one of them's a turret with the crane attached. Someone does. That's interesting. One of these. So I got to figure out which way this goes because this one is different than the other three. Uh, one of them has the top, so I don't know which way that's gonna go. Oh, we do have our crane though because all these battleships. There's our crane. You need the crane if you're gonna have a plane that shoots off. The skid, you would have needed a crane to, I guess, lift it back up onto the water. So we'll figure out where that goes, because they would lift it out of the water and put it back in position, which is crazy. But cool, little scout plane. Somebody check. I'm not sure what, uh, you know, what Japanese plane would have that, would their scout planes have been? I think it's the same one that was on the, you know, it's not a Zero with floats on it, but they must have had their own... Back then, there was no satellites telling you where everybody was. You had to go send the plane out to find them and go there. Is that Wes? Oh, what's up, Wes? What's going on, man? He's just popping in to say hello. They're on their way to Jacksonville Memorial Warbirds. That's the name of it. And Wes, you were there last week if you're still listening. But if you're driving and texting, I'm going to be upset with you. So hopefully you're not doing that. Um, but yeah, check out Wes. going to have hopefully a lot of footage there and... Uh, 
they brought a lot of planes. They brought a lot of a lot of stuff to fly there. So it'll be a lot of uh, a lot of good content coming out of that show. We hope. Go. So, all right. So next step is cutting. I want to get rid of the ribbons and let's take a look inside. So scissor there. So I'm gonna go. I'm going with the exacto knife. Slice this ribbon. It's nothing crazy. Nope. This isn't a fresh exacto. Go. One. One. Cutting through it here. Come on. Get that one, two. Nicely through. Two. Boom. One, two. Get this one through. Three. Last. Here. Easy, nice and easy. Bang. All right. That has to be front, right? Darn it. Oh, man, this thing is pretty neat. All right, so now that's. So I took off the ribbon, so that should give me with the. Regan gets caught with a little caught up on it. That over there. Pop down in the superstructure. Okay. Maybe screws. Or something holding it back. Are we being held back? Tape. I see tape. Yep. I see a piece of tape here. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. These turrets move. That's the tape is holding those in. But it might also be holding the superstructure on. But that's cool. These guns. Oh, wow. That's cool. All these guns rotate on the, on the sides. Let me see from this side. These move. This looks like okay. Oh. So like that would come off. See that? This yeah, one. Yeah, look, try to lift that little of it. Yeah. This? That. Oh yeah, there we go. It's gonna go. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's magnet. That was just a really serious magnet. Cool. Little different. Everyone's a little different, but. If that raises up there like that. Oh wow, this hole comes all the way off to the There we go. Check that out. Different. Nice. I like it with the magnet. So these must be these little holes must all be magnets. Cool. So that pops off like so. Pull some of the foam out of the way. It, but let's take a peek inside. There you go. See? There. We got our four motors. We got a receiver right in the middle. And then the ESC with the switch is on the wall to the bottom right, if you're looking at the screen, above the Motion RC logo. That's there. But a four motor drive system. That's pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, stop eating lunch. Nice.
Cool. All right, so that's how the structure be off. Now, as far as this boat goes, um, what I like right off the bat is that the motors, I thought they'd be more to the back, but they're, they're like dead center. So with the ESC on the wall towards the camera here, um, I probably put my battery on the wall uh, farther from you. And then uh, I don't know how much uh, ballast I'm going to need. I'm going to need a little bit. Actually, the water line on it is higher than what looks to be the case. But uh, we will see. I've got ballast from a different boat. Again, for anybody who haven't seen, we got a video on, again, ideas of how to do ballast. But this, is, this tends to be how I like to do it. Just a Ziploc bag full of heavy BBs or multiple Ziploc bags to position them around if you need it to the front, to the back. <coughs> that has worked well for me uh, thus far. So uh, that's where it's going. Now, now, the only thing I don't know, they don't give you um, instructions on to where. Uh, I'll have to look at a... Chip Alex, can you find a picture of the Congo? Type in Congo Battleship. In, well, that's that one. Okay, that'll work. That'll work. Because I see the crane on there. You could bring it up to them, and then we can uh, we put it. So the crane goes, because I'm looking where a crane, that looks like the crane spot. Yeah. Okay. Ah, you see the rigging is going to go through the top. Oh, man. That's going to be crazy. Now go to the back of the boat, back of the ship. You see the, uh, see the turret, this, this thing with the rigging over the top of it in there, right there. That's interesting. They see that? Can't see much. Oh, okay. But that's where <laughs> that's going to go. That's interesting. So let's put it together. Let's get it, uh, let's get it sitting in its full glory. So structure back up, pop it on. This is an easy, easy fit. Wow, it just only fits one way. So that's there. So now I got a hole here. We have our obviously our four turrets. So then this turret we believe was here. Is that where it showed in that picture? I think this one is this way. Yep, and it just fits. Wow, perfect. So it can still rotate. But it was showing rigging like somehow goes over the top of this, which is gonna be interesting. Then wait, go back to that picture again. Sorry, I missed it. Now those two try to zoom those front turrets. Okay, the very front one is the one without little anti-air anti turrets on top. So that means this one is here. This one doesn't have guns. Then there's two turrets with just anti, with anti-air on top, and they, they are the same, so they can go on either, either side. You know, one, and they just rest in. You don't need to glue these in at all want them to be able to move and move any which direction which is cool but i'm really interested to see because um what was it the uh oh it's a no it's the yamato itself the yamato has so let me do that real quick i'm gonna pull oh and then the crane so the last hole we have is right down here and that has to be crane is right here so that would be able to raise up and the crane actually you can raise it up a bit and uh you know that would grab the the plane out of the water get it back on its sled now this entry because this sled doesn't move so i'm just wondering and how did that work <laughs> you know like how did that just slingshot i guess the sled would go up at a 45 degree angle or something and just shoot the plane off that must have been crazy what does the ETA for the first shipment of Cougars look like? Any updates? Um, if there's nothing changed on the website, Spencer, then that means there is no change. They're, they're going to be here uh, soon. So what was it, late May, early June for the first? Were well, you in on the very first, uh, very first um, order, if you will? The very first, uh, what am I, the word, not shipment. Um, what is it? Pre-order. Pre yeah, yeah, I guess the first, uh, I don't know the word I'm looking for. Um, it's Friday. Words on a Friday. Check out this. So, just so you guys can see the difference in size. 
bam. I mean, I hope that sort of puts it out there in perspective that the Congo, again, was probably super large when it was built in 1911. Um, and it didn't have the superstructure, the turrets. It was a battle cruiser with 1911 technology. It was when it was commissioned. That's, that's what I read. That was my wiki knowledge. <laughs> and then they said in 1928 they added stuff. And then in 1938 um, it went to, I guess, its final form that, you know, it served all the way till 1944. Um, you know, see a lot more. It's funny, a lot more detail throughout the Congo because it's more compact. Everything's sort of compressed on there than, uh, you know, than the Yamato per se. But, uh, you know, that is a thing. Now, don't judge on the heights just because they're, they're both on different stands. So, you know, the Yamato even looks extra taller than the Congo is, but I don't think that's really the case. But uh, either way, you know, a good judgment. I think this one is 44 inches, the Congo, and... The amount is about 53 inches in total. It's almost 10 inches uh, longer. So, um, yeah, but Spencer, if there was if there was a delay or something, they they would I would assume they would know by now and would have posted it on uh, on the website. So everything should be copacetic to get it uh, when you expect it to receive it. But just looking at man, this is cool. So now these are both 200 scale. Um, again, they're scaled to each other, which is also really cool. But, uh, yeah, man, I still have all the ballast in this one. So this one's still heavy. Still a tad heavy. But now let's get the rigging. I want to see how the rigging works, uh, through this. Because, you know, there is a hole, but, like, there's no way. <laughs> no way. But there are hooks. So that's what I think... I think I'm going to be on the side hook. It'd be almost impossible to see, but there are like little, little serrated. Oh, here we go. Ah, ah, never mind. Look at that. So there's a rig, a ring. Perfect. Perfect. They thought of everything. So there's a ring that the rigging's attached to that will just go over the top. That. And finishes off cool oh. needle nose the fat fingers pliers these are metal all these hooks all metal Shot it, it's slang shot off. Darn it. Ah, I'm fail. I'm fail. Live stream fails. All right, this is through. Got man. Oh, there we go. This one. on there bang cool rigging on that side is done let's see this rigging up that's the only real part but look how i mean just like the way they tie together like when you pull on it like everything becomes taut i don't know something about the rigging on these Put that there for now. There she is. So that's it. You know, that's what you don't have to do much with these at all. And you've got a beautifully impressive display model. Um, and obviously one that then you can drop in a pool or a lake and, uh, you know, have some fun overall with. Um, but super cool, super simple setup. So... When you charge your battery, uh, 
you know, however long that takes is about as long as it would take to uh, unbox one of these and go. Now, as far as the stickers go, um, again, it's just flags. I think you can kind of get away with placing them just about anywhere you wish. So what do they give you? Same, so this is the same as the Yamato. Uh, they give you three rising suns of different of different sizes, and they give you one Japanese flag. From what my understanding was the Japanese flag or the country of origin flag is always on the back, like even on the Titanic, on the Missouri. So I would put the Japanese flag on this pole back here. And then the large rising sun flag like with the Yamato, I actually enjoy putting it like if you can get it on a rigging, um, a piece of the rigging. Uh, it's kind of cool because when the ship's driving and the wind blows, uh, it'll move on the rigging, whereas it'll sort of, you know, it'll stand still on something uh, on something fixed. So I would put this big one up here. And again, it's just double sided. You just fold it over. Um, so I'm going to fold. So I would fold this like that, get that in there. And then the medium size rising sun, I'd probably put, actually, I'll probably put the smaller one on the front there and then another smaller one up top. But I don't think you'd get yelled at uh, for putting them wherever you want to put them. Um, I don't think anyone's going to come and call you out because I doubt you're going to find too many crystal clear pictures of the Congo uh, as it was just based on the time period alone. That's why I didn't realize they have, they have pictures of, you know, I was doing thing. There's actually a picture of the Yamato as it exploded, like which is crazy. Like there's a there's a shot of that. Then there's an aftermath picture of like, you know, the immense fireball. But you know, some someone was taking pictures when they blew up that, and there was a picture on the, uh, you know, which is kind of cool. Oh, my stand, stand is coming out. I'll probably glue the stand in. But overall, man, super neat. And again, you get everything just built up. So on the top of the deck, this is, again, as we've said in other ones, all real wood. You know, it's real wood for the decking. There's mixes of plastic. You know, some of the structure is plastic. But then, like, all the railing, that's all metal. You know, this is, like, real chain. It's glued down to the top. Um, but that's, like, real mini metal chain there. Um, there's a lot of brass, metal, wood, you know, a lot goes into these. Even the screws, nice with the gold, the gold finishes up top. But all around, just some really neat detail on this ship. That is just going to be, it's going to be awesome trying to get them both in the lake. We tried it last time. I'm going to try it again, Alex. <laughs> but I tried to, you yeah, saw the, guys saw the footage. I had, we, last time we went to the lake to do the, uh, the recent Bismarck, you saw, the Yamato, we brought the Missouri, we brought the Nimitz. So I had all four of them at the lake thinking, oh, I'll put them all in the water and I'll just drive one or the other. <laughs> Having two in the water with the waves coming in, pushing the boats, trying to just make sure those boats don't collide, trying to get video, was not an easy task uh, doing it as the one driver while Alex is trying to, uh, to film. But I think with this one, we'll park the Yamato. Hopefully we get a nice clear day on Monday. I'll park the Yamato deep. Let oh, it sit there Day? and then we'll drive. Oh, not Memorial Day. Sorry. <laughs> Tuesday, I guess we're off Monday. Uh, but then, uh, you know, park it out there and then just drive this one, sail this one around it a little bit. Cause they did sail together uh, a couple times, at least I'm sure. And then the Nagato would have been great to have here as well to have yeah. all three in there. And then we need a mini Corsairs to fly over the top of them. <laughs> yeah. Hellcats, but all around, super cool, super neat excited to get this one and then after this i don't know if there's another 200 scale warship left so we're going to start getting into some of the other ones we got like the armadale there's some 70 uh 70 70 second scale um ships we got um some other ones coming in but we're working through because obviously a lot of these boats for a long time had you know just the white pictures didn't have media because again it's tough to get you they are expensive um, especially the bigger ones like this, but you know, media helps. So like the Arleigh Burke is one I want to do. So that's one forty fourth scale. So that's going to seem, so the detail on it is going to be, should be more impressive at a, 
at a smaller scale. We're all looking, yeah, go down. So then the one, the one thirty scale. Those are like the RTRs we've done. Those are the yeah. those are the plastic, you know, cheaper versions. Clearly, at the price. But um, yeah, I'll just go down to, you know what? Sort by price. High to low. No, go to uh sort by. Click that off. Click that off. And then just yeah, sort by high to low. And then we'll see. So Congo's like the last one, yeah, in white photos. I guess the Armadale, that's not a picture we took. That's one we gotta do. So 50 scale. I want to see that one too. The Arleigh Burke I want to see as well. That's that's a famous one, the destroyer. And then uh Yeah, man, working through. Working through them. And then more coming eventually, but super cool. Man, these boats don't have these don't have, yeah, I mean, hey, what are you going to do, you know? And especially a boat like this, Slap Nuts, where it's, I call it Spencer Slap Nuts. I'm just, I like saying it now. But he's, he's, and he's in, and he's in here, I believe, too. It's the same, same person, right? I believe you're Spencer, right? Is Slap Nuts RC? Is he, is he commenting as two people trying to make it look better? But yeah, but also a boat like the Congo, like, I didn't, I'll admit, I didn't know nothing about the Congo until I saw it on the website, and then... When they sent it to me, that's when I started researching about it. Whereas the Yamato is something you see, you know, a lot of people who have no care might have heard that name before. Um, you've heard of the Missouri. You might have heard of the Nimitz, more popular. But, like, it's funny. With the with the videos, though, they get a lot of views, um, surprisingly. The Nimitz video, we were not expecting like 75,000 yeah. views or something in, like, a week. So it's, uh, it's interesting how it works. And then last week, you know, West did the Corsair. So today, do this. And then, you know. But yeah, obviously, and again, too, you know, we as an RC company, you know, our RC channel was started, planes were our, you know, our, and are still are, you know, what people know Motion RC for, but, you know, we want to change that. A lot of people now in the boater community know the name Motion RC because of the boats we got, you know, and then the tanks, you know, a lot of people who are into tanks now know Motion RC after the years of pumping out tanks, so tanks, um, get a lot of views and stuff so it just takes time but you got to do these you know so that people know what to expect when they get something out of the box that's the best thing regardless of what it is whether it's a car boat truck we're gonna do it all and uh have fun with it too but this was exciting so again as you saw earlier easy access to the servo if you ever need to change it but it's simple one servo just to control the rudder the four motor system so it's just throttle and rudder control and uh you got this thing going but um, any other questions, guys, about about this, about anything else while we're here? Because if not, then, you know, we're probably going to wrap up this video and get an early jump start on the Memorial Day weekend. Don't forget, hel we won't forget helicopters as well. Um, Wes is going to be doing one of the bigger row bands eventually here once uh, he finishes through some of the other things. And uh, we'll start getting into that as well, uh, which will be cool. Um, I believe there's something else from Flywing coming which is awesome. So Wes had recently done the Airwolf, was it? Yeah, he has the Airwolf. Um, he showed the unboxing, so he's still got to get that out and fly it. But then uh, you know, some other stuff in the heli by Heliways is uh, going to be coming too, uh, which will be awesome. But yeah, they do look great. Spencer, that's, that's weird. They do look great. And if you ever get a chance to see one in person, you know, they're really, really impressive. Um, I think you could walk one of these into you know, a modeling show, even the model would be like, wow, you know, you didn't build that, like you pull that out of the box. And if you're a modeler and only need to do minor things to, to one of these ships, uh, you know, to add even an extra level of detail, you know, majority of the work is done. That's what makes these things so darn cool. Um, yeah, this one looks, this one looks like it's going to be a fun little, uh, fun little sail just based on, again, the four engines, the size of it, that one's four four motors in the weight and i believe it's the same power system inside um i could be wrong i'll check the website um unless these motors are a little smaller but i am feeling this one's gonna have a little more oomph in the water not that you want that anyway when you go full throttle in any of these ships it's way out of scale there's they're overpowered um you know but you can always bring your throttle about 50 percent and uh they'll drive more scale but driving around scale 
gonna be a little boring over over time it's fun to uh turn up the juice especially when waves are coming at the lake and you hit the waves and you watch it go over the you know like it's like you know when a real boat passes and puts unscale waves at, or i guess scale waves at these ships waves. you would think these ships would have tried to you know avoid you know they'll actively avoid a storm um but if it ever got caught in it it's fun to watch it you know to see your ballast uh pay off that's one thing i've yet to you know i've 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 obviously not properly balance aircraft and we know where that goes <laughs> when they're in the air i've yet to unproperly balance one of these which uh you know is a good thing i guess but um you know if you did unproperly balance one of these where you thought it was the ballast i'm sure if you hit a wave and watched it tip over you'd be pretty darn upset if, uh, we got a few clips if it of went under. messing with the ballast where one of the ships is like well this one very so far back in the water well the Nagato so or the Yamato the Yamato actually and I've showed this on the video but there's a there's like a a deck in here where you could get access to the servos from back here in this and we were trying to get some pictures on the water and I had it like this up against like I just I pressed this on the beach and had it this way and as the waves are coming i didn't realize water was getting in there so when we started driving it out there you saw it started like it was like this in the water and i'm like wondering oh my goodness so we had a lot of water in in the back um and then i realized my mistake why that happens so that because there's one that should matter there's that one part like i wouldn't even know what that would have been you know what that section would have been for um in real life but uh you know, it, it it allowed water to go over the top to get in. But none of them so far, none of them have ever gotten water in them, um, you know, from the bottom up, if you will, which is which is what you want. Be nice to see Nagato and that model side by side to see their difference. I know, Wes has the Nagato right now. Um, next time I meet up with Wes, I, I think I'm going to have to bring up the rest of the Japanese fleet so then he could do... You could have all three together. Because I had that here and we have it. It's just Wes uh, down in Florida has that one right now on his set. And uh, I now have the other two. And the Gato, I believe, is in between these two as far as size-wise. So the Nagato. Because, again, this would have been the... This one got classed as a battleship. But it started off, you know, it was made, I think, before even the idea of a battleship was made. You know? Again, this one was commissioned 1911, and then eventually, you know, became a battleship just because, I don't know, they needed they needed everything they, they could get there, but didn't help. But all around, super cool to have, to see them both together um, here, and uh, all around, super, super cool. So if there's no, uh, there's no other questions or anything, guys, and we've been on for about 45 minutes here, and... Uh, you know, obviously smaller viewership on a video of boats. That's what we would expect, but all good. All good. We'll be back. Um, we'll be back next week. Oh, some other things I wanted to point to. Alex, if you could bring up the website. Guys, if you're interested, if you're out there, take a peek. We have mouse pads available in the merchandise section. So if you want to throw in, if you, you know, if you got a $95 order and you want the free shipping, you could toss in a, a mouse pad to, uh, to put you over the top. It would be in accessories. There they are. Got a gray one. One's a P38, and then one with a little bit of everything. Um, and then in... Uh, I those pictures. You did. You did. <laughs> and then uh, and Todd did a good job. And then, uh, what's it called? Then in the EU section, Lemon RXs are now in stock, I believe. Um, on the EU side of things, you don't have to go show that, but anybody you know who wants a DSMX compatible receivers um, from Lemon, you can find those in the EU. And then for you U.S. guys, if you're into Balsa aircraft, um, actually, yeah, bring up. So here, go go to the Nexus, stop by brand, shop by brand. No, up, 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 up. You were there. Oh, you can do it there. You can do it a lot of places. But go up to RC models. Oh, there we go. So if you guys notice, there's a lot. We've added, we've added some new. So sort by new, I guess. Sort by newest. So we add a lot of planes. So like you see that. The twin oh that one is that one in stock um they might be in stock now are they but i heard like you know we're getting um a lot of stock back of our nexa uh 
Warbirds, um, our Nexa, of our Nexa Bolt, and not just Warbirds, anything Nexa, um, we're getting another container, and that container might have arrived if this one is now in stock, um, but most of them should be in stock at this moment. Um, it looks like that that's the case. I don't know if you want to scroll down and see what's out of stock, but even the stuff that's out of stock should be getting into stock soon. I thought it was going to be more early next week, but if it's arrived, then that means they're pulling them out and putting them up there. So if you're into... Uh, you know, Balsy been looking at Nexa planes. It's been out of stock. Check it again, because now they're coming back in stock. Look at that glider. I didn't even know where that glider come from. Trojan. That Very Trojan high. looks really good. <laughs> what size is that? 69-inch Trojan. Nice. I like the red and white. Yeah. That's nice. That's a really good looking, a really good looking Trojan. Those pilots look good too. Is that the stock the pilots? Now behind there was like a mo. Is that a motor glider? That one. What is that? This is one you're going to have to pull, you're going to have to tow up. Is it a tow glider? It has to be, right? Your Spats glider. Look at that. But 98 and, a, 98 and a half inch weeks. Oh, no, okay, it's got a prop on the front of it. Oh, cool. That's different. That's really interesting. Nice. This looks cool. So either way, guys, a lot of Nexus stuff back in stock. So if you're on our email and stuff, you'll see this. I'll probably put it in our Tuesday email, you know, if you guys haven't seen already. But if you're into it, oh, a Tuskegee Airman P-51B. Nice. The B model is like one of the least molded Mustang models out there. It's got to be. Like, I feel like the B, a lot of people always ask about the B, but the B always kind of gets overlooked. It's always the D. Like everybody makes the D, but uh, the B looks different. Looks interesting. That's cool. It's a good looking plane too. Man, really cool stuff happening. But either way, guys, definitely stay tuned. Next Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern, we're back with our standard live show. So we'll do a little bit of everything. Go through the community um, as well. We'll hear. We'll probably get a lot of footage from uh, Wes's weekend down at the uh, Jacksonville Memorial Warbird Fly-in. That's where he is this week. And um, as always, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. And if you're watching this and, you know, after the fact of being live, thank you so much for watching. If you have any other questions about the Congo or anything else, drop it in the uh, comment section down below. Hit the like button on your way out the door. Always helps. And as always, guys, thank you so much for shopping at Motion RC, watching our content, and, uh, you know, being around, guys. So that'll do it for us. Have a happy Memorial Day weekend. Um, you know, enjoy the time. Enjoy the three days, uh, the, the extended vacation, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. A happy 50th birthday. 50? I'm not 50 yet. Man, man, I'm just starting my 40s here. Right, Come on. Roasted. Bye, guys.